Oh, well, yes, the Bhagavad Gita. Um, no, I mean, it's scholastically reckoned to be compiled somewhere between 500 and 200 BC. Um, if you think of the missionary zeal of King Ashoka, I don't know, 300 and something, is he? Not sure. 200 and something. And the fact that he sends missionaries all over his relevant world. He, it's not that far to um, uh, the Mediterranean. <laughs> His empire is not that far away. What we call um, India and the Indus and you know, it's not that far away if you go west, northwest. And of course the caravan route goes straight through Persia. Well, and round India, of course. It's en route to the Mediterranean. <laughs> You're on the highway, what? Of course it spread. The ideas are spread. It's an international um, theocratic network. Buddhism's established. It's, you know, showing Hinduism up in its faults. And then after Ashoka, well, his empire declines, and and you know what takes over a resurgence of Hinduism, a, a revision, an update, takes into account what's happened. Buddhism, right? We'll um, steal their thunder, will pinch their progress and accredit it to mm -mm, possibly 500 BC. <laughs> we always like to say, look, we've got the authority of centuries behind us. This is the true, uh, it's just that it's now in its written down form. Oh no, we haven't changed a word. <laughs> of course you have. You are the change of the word. You're a different person reading it and writing it. Does that make Bhagavad Gita any less valuable on the country? And I mean literally the country, it makes it more valuable, just as the New Testament. It makes a much better job of religion for the Middle East than ever Judaism did. I'm not fair to say, Ju is it? Yeah, Judaism, yeah, yeah. It is Judaism by that point, isn't it? <clears throat> is it in some sense oral tradition written down? Of course. It all goes back and back and further back and further back. You know, you can get further back than the Hebrew scriptures. You, you go to Egypt. You can get further back than Egypt. You go to central North Africa, what's now desert. No doubt you can go a lot further back than that. And um, as far as I know, we've just about no trace of that at all. Does it matter? No, no, what really justifies the truth is its validity. And we're not talking about accounts of history. Well, I was interrupted here, so let me just gather myself. Yeah, if you look at Judaism, right, but it's, it's apparent Hebrew, Hebrew history. Well, Hebrews were unquestionably affected by Egypt. Presumably they were deported. I mean, that's, that's pretty sound. And 
you can just imagine how the Persian culture, I mean it brought in again all this concept of demonology really, angels and Satan and that. It, it, it's from Persia, it's not um, It's not pre-exile, it's post. And uh, the Jesus story is not a, um, it's not a Hebrew story, it's Greek. And where had the Greeks been? They conquered Persia. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> ah, and Ahsoka is a, basically a, Persian king that's conquered India, or his dad anyway. I mean, it's all so linked. Uh, and you know, what? what is Ahsoka's, uh, sometimes pronounced Ahsoka and sometimes pronounced Ashoka. I don't know, it's S or it's SH, depending which spelling you want, from the Anglican point, in English point of view. What's his neighbour? Oh, Alexander the Great's uh, empire in, in, in its decayed form of four sub-empires that, you know, were after Alexander the Great's death. Which way is the influence going? Probably both ways. I suspect the Greeks were influencing what influenced India, and India influenced what was remaining of Greece, the Greek Empire, should I say plural now, <laughs> or the Hellenized empires, put it that way. Is it the Seleucid one that was his close neighbour? One or two, whatever it was. And, and the whole mix-up is worse than that. I mean, you might think that, oh, well, the Jesus story is therefore um, uh, Greek mystery, mystery cult, as applied to the Hebrew nation, which is fair enough, yes. You can sound in, in many respects, you can say that. But that in itself was from Egypt. And the ancient Hebrew, as it's supposed to be, historicity, is um, directly affected by Egypt. So it's two lines of the same source coming together again in the Jesus story. But it's not that simple. You're not clear if the Jesus story isn't really not just a Greek update from the Hebrew point of view, further update, you know, a Judaism point of view. But at the same time, itself a Buddhist influence from two branches, both indirectly via the Greeks and their contact close to India, being close to India. Buddhism, and direct missionary zeal of Buddhists and so on. It's not even that simple. A country has contacts in other countries and is affected by its own contacts there, not just their contacts here. There's, if you like, tentacles going out in both directions. And of course, the, um, in this particular case, as I say, we're on Highway 1, we've got um, the silk trade, spices from India, silks from China, and India's halfway. <laughs> <laughs> along the route. <laughs> You've got artifacts um, of 
Greece. Turning up in, you know, even as far as the British Isles. Um, well, obviously, you've got Roman stuff there. The Romans were there. I mean, they occupied it. The world is far more global in ancient times and certainly just historical times, you know, 2,000 years ago, that's not really that ancient. It's far more global than you think. And China is very much keeping tabs on what's happening in India. All sorts of um, travellers have come from China to check out India. Everything, and they took scriptures back, incidentally, to China. It's a quite amazing setup. To some extent, it's an international economy, of course. In, 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 in a, I mean, you'd say trivial way compared to the sheer volume of stuff in the modern world, but um, in a major way, it's an ideas network that's global and international. Um, technologies and understandings and so on and theologies, not just philosophies. Well, I mean, philosophy doesn't mean much compared to theology in, in most of the world. Travel's fast. You've got a good idea, my goodness. You want to apply it everywhere. You think everyone should have it, and everyone thinks they should have it if they think it's possibly a good idea. <laughs> Thank goodness it still works like that today. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Dad.